Good morning or afternoon or evening or whatever it happens to be where you are watching. Thank you for tuning in and checking out this week's build video. Today we're gonna to be putting together a $1,500 gaming and streaming PC using an RTX 2080 Super and a Ryzen 7 3700X. Let's get moving. Corsair introduces their newest RGB infused peripheral to help you get a leg up on the competition, the Dark Core RGB Pro. An 18,000 DPI PixArt optical sensor gives you unparalleled precision, while the interchangeable side grips mean that you could customize the look and feel of the Dark Core to meet your needs. You also get premium features like USB-C charging, switches rated for 50 million clicks, 8 programmable buttons, 50 hours of battery life, and onboard profile storage. Check out the link below or head to Corsair.com to learn more. There have been a lot of price fluctuations in the PC component market over the past few months. I'm probably pretty sure that you are aware of that. It's becoming more and more difficult to put together a reasonably priced system. However, here on the channel, we are trying to do that every week. So if you guys like this kind of content, you wanna see PC builds of different price points, different form factors, different performance targets, make sure you get subscribed to the channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming content. Today, we are working on a $1,500 budget. And I was a little restricted with what I had in my office. So I went on to PC Part Picker and I tried to put together a comprehensive list of what I think is a good $1,500 system. And I had most of the stuff that we could use to put it together. However, there are a few substitutions that we're gonna have to make just based on what I have available in my inventory. Shouldn't really affect the performance at all of this system, it's mostly aesthetic things. But just keep in mind that the links that you're gonna see down below and the price list that I based this build on aren't exactly what you're gonna be seeing here. Now as a for instance, let's start just by talking about our graphics card that we have here on the table. At $1,500, I think you should be trying to target a 2080 Super if you can. Now, I understand that if you need more storage or more memory or if you want in a more expensive case, it might not be possible and you might have to step down to like a 2070 Super. But for our budget, we're gonna get a 2080 Super in here. The only problem is the only one that I have in the office that's not water blocked is this one. And this one is about $100 more expensive than the one that we used on our list. So this, is ASUS's RG Strix White Edition of the 2080 Super. It is a little more pricey than the Founders Edition, which is right now $700. However, it's gonna give you a little bit better performance, a little bit better cooling, but it shouldn't skew our numbers that much that our testing is gonna be irrelevant to what you might expect if you were building this at home. Similarly, a couple other things that I'm gonna use in this build that are not on my price list are the memory and the storage. So for memory, we're going with a two by eight gig kit of Patriot's Viper LED memory. Now I'm actually not even sure if this is still on the market at any reasonable price. They have moved on to their RGB memory. So this LED memory is just white LEDs at the top, but for the same price or maybe even cheaper now, for like 90 bucks, you could get a kit of this same memory, but it's RGB enabled instead of just one color. So. I don't think, again, we're gonna encounter any performance differences there, but just know that this kit isn't exactly what I'm gonna put into the parts list. Also, the storage we're gonna be using for this build is different than what I might recommend otherwise. This is a T-Force Delta SSD, and the reason that I chose it is, again, just for aesthetics with our build. But if you are playing along at home, this is a little more expensive than something that you might wanna choose or you might wanna choose something that's more expensive depending on what your storage needs are. And as I always say with all my builds, make sure you're tailoring your storage to what you think you're gonna be using in your system. And the last thing that we're gonna talk about that is slightly different from what I'm gonna link down below is the case. This is NZXT's H510 Elite. I just don't have the regular H510 in the office, but the regular H510 goes for about $70. And this is more than double that. This is about $150. And the only real difference is the front panel glass and the RGB fans. So if you go with the regular version, you're gonna have the same build experience, mostly the same aesthetics, especially if you're looking at it from the side. I just don't have one of those in office. So we're gonna go with the Elite for this build. Other than that, everything on this half of the table 
is exactly what you're gonna see in the parts list. And of course, let's start with our processor, the Ryzen 7 3700X. Eight cores, 16 threads, really good gaming performance, really good gaming and streaming performance if that's something that you guys are interested in. It's got tons of power, clock speeds are much higher than prior generations, memory compatibility is much better than prior generations, and it is one of my recommendations for anybody looking to put together a powerful system these days. We're not gonna stick with the stock cooler, but we're not going full AIO. I've gotten a lot of comments recently about people who wanna see more air coolers and question my use of AIOs in a lot of systems, and to be honest, I want to make sure that our processors are reasonably cooled and also I get a lot of hardware into the office that I wanna test out. So that's why I use AIOs in a lot of builds, but you don't necessarily need that and we're gonna prove that today by using Noctua's NH-U12S. This is a single tower, single fan air cooler and it's gonna be more than enough for our 3700X. Noctua stuff is the best and this is their Chrome X black version so it's gonna fit into our aesthetic. And for our motherboard, we're going with something that maybe you guys aren't that familiar with. This is a board from Biostar. This is their B550 GTA. And one of the things that I really like about this board is the price. This is $140. We're finally seeing some B550 boards come in at a reasonable price, a nice price savings, and also giving you most of the features that you would expect with a higher end X570 board. Specifically, this board comes with 2.5 gig LAN, which is not something that you see on a lot of even the higher end boards. So I don't use a lot of Biostar products, but they sent this over and I wanted to test it out. We're gonna see how it works with our 3700X today. And then for power, topping it off from Coolmaster, the MWE Gold 650, 650 watts, 80 plus gold rated, fully modular. That's really what you're targeting in a build like this. And it's not huge also because our case isn't huge, so we don't have a whole lot of room in the basement and this is gonna fit perfectly with our build. So given that we have half of our components that are exactly what I have listed and half of our components that are slightly different, Let's put them all together, see how they fit, see how they perform, and then show you guys the final product.
So that's it guys, another week, another build down. And this one came out mwah, so good. But I think that probably has at least a little bit to do with the fact that I snuck some Ensource Customs extensions in there instead of the regular black cabling. And of course you don't need to do this if you are playing along at home, but I really like the way it sets off the black white theme and I don't know, it just looks so good. But again, you don't need to do it as configured as we talked about in the intro. This is a $1,500 system. Actually, $1,495. And that's with pricing for the CPU from Micro Center, which is $259 as of the filming of this. If you don't have access to a Micro Center, as I know some of my audience does or doesn't, pricing from Amazon is only $20 higher. So this is either $1,495 from Micro Center or $1,515 if you don't have access to one. So still right around that $1,500 mark. And I think this is a great performing build for that price. Now, as far as the motherboard goes, the Biostar B550 GTA worked well. I had no overheating issues with VRMs. Our 3700X was boosting as appropriate as we would expect it to. Uh, and performance of the CPU was good. The motherboard is missing a few things, and that is what you can expect from a lower end product. There's no postcode, LED postcode. There's no heat sink over the VRM at the top of the board. And the software that controls the LEDs is really trash. There's no option for white, first of all, or at least not one that I could find. So our SSD that is very prominent in our system is blue. I had to make it blue. It was like the closest I could get to white. And then the LEDs that are over the IO cover and over the chipset are so dim, I could barely even tell that they were on. I had to like cut my hands over my eyes and kind of stare in there to see if they were actually functioning. And they are, but they're so dim that you can't even really tell. It doesn't add anything to the interior of the case. I don't know even why they're there. So you do make some compromises when you're going with a lower end board, clearly, but at $140, it can handle a 3700X without a problem. So you gotta kind of weigh that and figure out where your priorities are. But again, it did function well. Aesthetically though, maybe a little short. However, our XMP profile had no issues. We were able to just one click it up to 3200 megahertz on our Patriot memory. No problems at all there. Temperatures also on our CPU and GPU were really good. We had maximum CPU temperatures of 60 degrees Celsius while gaming, and the GPU was in the low 50s, didn't really exceed like 52, 53 degrees at all. So airflow in this case is definitely appropriate. Even though it's small, there's enough going on in here, enough fans pushing air from front to back where we didn't have to worry about any thermal issues really at all. And even just the single tower air cooler was plenty for our CPU. Now this is the second time that I've built a full system in this case. And I will tell you if you are using an air cooler because of the proportions here and how everything is kind of compact, what I would recommend is if you're using a modular power supply, plug your EPS cable in first to the motherboard before you put the motherboard into the case. Route that EPS cable back through the cutout and then screw everything down because once you have the motherboard in place and screwed down and the tower cooler there, getting your hand in behind there to plug everything in is a nightmare. So don't do it that way. Make sure you get that APS cable plugged in first. That'll definitely save you a lot of time and a lot of scraped knuckles. And then of course we do have to talk about our gaming experience here. And as you would expect from a high-end CPU and a high-end GPU, nothing but really good things to say. All these games were tested at 1440p and max settings. That includes Doom Eternal, which was on Ultra Nightmare. Every other game was on Ultra. And even titles like Ghost Recon Wildlands, which are really punishing, were running at good frame rates. This is the kind of build that you'd wanna pair with a high refresh rate 1440p monitor and just have the best time just gaming on this thing because these parts, while not the most expensive, not the most powerful, are really gonna give you a satisfying experience. And I think this is kind of the, maybe the sweet spot for price to performance if that's what you're gonna be doing with your build. So that is our $1,500 system. What do you guys think of this baby right here? Let me know down below in the comments. Also, like we said earlier, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel if you don't wanna miss any more of these builds. We do them every single week here. Thanks so much for watching guys as always, and I will see you next time.